Good morning, guests. Just give us uh, about a minute and we will get started very shortly. Thank you. Good morning, uh, and my name is Kareem Afsal, Vice President of PDC Machines, and I want to welcome you to our third in a series of webinars. And today we'll be talking about scaling the hydrogen economy with PDC compression. Um, it's really a pleasure to have all of you around the world joining us today and taking about a half an hour of your time to go through a journey with us about uh, various case studies and uh, some question and answer. Uh, today's agenda uh, will be uh, brisk. Uh, we will start off with talking about our PDC machines and our history, our various products and technology, and PDC and the world and our various facilities. Then Jim Petrecki, who's our Director for Hydrogen Energy for Americas, European Union, and Australia, will be joining us to talk about various case studies and applications for uh, using PDC technology to scale the hydrogen business. And then we hope to open it up to a very robust question and answer session at the end. So we encourage you to use the chat function uh, to interact with each other and also to pose any questions that you may have in the question and answer uh, block in your, uh, on your screen. So welcome to PDC Machines. We're the worldwide leader for hydrogen compression and refueling technologies. Founded in 1977, in business over 44, 43 years, entering a 44th year. Uh, we are currently a second generation family owned business based outside of the city of Philadelphia in the mid-Atlantic region of the United States, uh, where we're deeply committed to a localized manufacturing base with localized production to provide the highest world-class quality uh, and the fastest turnaround time for our products uh, for worldwide markets. Um, we do produce a worldwide uh, product to any code and standard anywhere in the world. Um, we serve a number of industries, the hydrogen energy and refueling markets uh, worldwide, as well as the industrial and specialty gas markets and applications, which was the subject of our webinar three weeks ago, filling gases like hydrogen, helium, argon, krypton, neon, specialty and rare gases for industrial specialty gas and petrochemical markets where high purity compression is required. Uh, we have the largest market share of compression equipment in the world uh, ecosystem for hydrogen energy. We have an installed base of over 4,000 compressors and over 450 compressors and hydrogen energy applications worldwide, where we have uh, really almost daily shipments of our product. And we have rapid assembly lines uh, that we'll get to. Now I'm going to give a video tour of the core technology that is PDC machines. So here we see our PDC diaphragm compressor and we're gonna have a cross section a blowout of our compressor. So essentially the diaphragm compressor is a reciprocating machine that uses high pressure hydraulic fluid to actuate a set of three metal plates, uh, which are diaphragms, uh, and you have static O-ring seals in between the oil side and the gas side, which enables 100% ultra high purity compression of gas within a controlled cavity and chamber. As the piston moves down towards the bottom dead center, gas enters the cavity and oil enters the cavity during the compression stroke. As the piston moves towards the top of the stroke, high pressure oil, uh, you're compressing an incompressible fluid, which is flexing your diaphragms and compressing your gas uh, in, in this manner. And this happens at a cycle count between three and 400 RPM for our diaphragm compression systems. And this uh, chart here shows the gas and the oil flow 
as a function of each other during the compression stroke. We have an oil pressure limiting valve, which regulates the oil pressure that the diaphragms can see on the oil side. This is all coupled with a CAM mechanism, which ensures priming of the system during each stroke and an automatic priming sequence of the compressor during the, uh, during the prime up and starting sequence. At PTC, we have a hydrogen vision, which we are uh, molding uh, in the months since our first webinar, uh, is to build a sustainable energy future through robust hydrogen infrastructure. And at PTC, we accomplish this through customer market focus, where we listen to the market and our customers, and we work together to provide solutions to solve your problems and the market's problems. We provide a world quality product to the world's code and standards for a lifetime of use. So all of our product can be met to US NEC electric codes, to European CE marking and ATEX hazardous area codes and standards to pressure equipment directive in the European Union. We supply a huge amount of product to the Chinese market, as well as the Korean KGS laws and the Japanese high pressure gas safety act law as well as we are working on the budding economies, uh, budding hydrogen economies of Australia, uh, Southeast Asia, Saudi Arabia, and other economies around the world. And we do this with our world-class staff with offices in regions around the world. So of course, we have PDC in the United States. We have an office of seven providing sales and after-service support uh, through our office in PDC China, located in Shanghai. We have PDC GK Japan, uh, based out of Kyoto, Japan, where uh, starting on July 1st, we'll have a team of four supplying uh, hydrogen compressors, our simple fuel hydrogen refueler, and local support and service and spares in that market. Uh, PDC Korea is served by uh, a network of partners in this market serving the hydrogen energy market, as well as the industrial gas markets that we serve. And very exciting to announce here, uh, starting on July 1st, we will have PDC European Union, which will be based out of Munich, who will be able to supply uh, direct orders, service and support for our European uh, colleagues and partners in Europe. Uh, here is just a brief sampling of our hydrogen compressors at work. So essentially our compressors are being used in light duty, medium duty, heavy duty filling of hydrogen fuel cell cars, buses, trucks, trains, forklifts, drones, you name it, our, our compressors are filling in those applications throughout the world. And we do this and we're able to bring hydrogen to scale through our multiple partnerships that we have, which are critical to our business. Uh, working alongside with hydrogen, uh, Ibis Energy Solutions, we have a joint development agreement providing novel hydrogen uh, feeling technologies to partners around the world. We were the co-winners of the Department of Energy H2 Refuel H-Prize Contest, which helped bring the simple fuel hydrogen refueling unit to the market. PDC has a partnership with Argonne National Labs as the exclusive patent a licensee helping to bring Argonne's patented method to reduce the size of hydrogen refueling stations using the pressure consolidation algorithm to markets around the world. And we are currently working very hard to bring standard technology and product with using, utilizing the Argonne patent method to various hydrogen markets around the world. On uh, my next slide, PDC is a proud partner in sustainability of the Philadelphia Eagles football team, uh, which I will go to in my next slide. And we work with partners, a vast network of regional partners around the world uh, in economies, hydrogen economies around the world to bring PDC technology with local experience to world markets everywhere that we serve. Our partnership with the Philadelphia Eagles is the first of its kind. It's bringing green hydrogen energy storage in the form of hydrogen fuel for a fleet of game day and regular day operations for the Philadelphia Eagles NFL football franchise. 
what they will do, the Eagles have a 10 megawatt uh, hour microgrid installed on their stadium, which uh, entails solar and wind energy production. And they will be using the off-peak power to produce hydrogen energy to compress, store, and dispense into a small fleet of hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles, as well as material handling, uh, uh, little game day buggies, and hopefully potentially some grass cutting equipment at the Eagles. And this is the first of its kind where the Eagles are the leaders in sports sustainability, uh, members of the Green uh, Sports Alliance and many other uh, uh, green sports alliances uh, around the world. Our facilities, PDC has been investing heavily into scaling our business to be able to meet the needs of the scaling hydrogen economy. We have over 100,000 square feet of manufacturing space with a supply chain within two hours radius of PDC that allows us to completely control the delivery time, the quality of the product, and to be able to deliver a world-class product throughout the world. With our lean manufacturing cells being able to supply bare product as well as system product around the world, our current weekly capacity is currently 20 compressors a week and we are getting ready to uh, implement a second shift, which will be able to bring dramatic scale to the market uh, that the market is gonna need as power to gas applications and large heavy duty applications for trucks start to hit the market as we know it. Now we're going to go on a virtual tour of PDC's uh, facility to give you a flavor of what we do. With that, I'm very pleased to send it over to Jim Petrecki, who will take you on a journey of hydrogen energy. Take it away, Jim. Thank you, Kareem. And I'd like to thank everyone for your time to discuss five hydrogen energy applications today. Before we talk applications, let me introduce you to PDC Hydrogen Solutions. First, diaphragm compressors offer a contamination-free operation. Very clearly, the quality of the hydrogen in is the same as the quality out. The compressor uses three metal diaphragms to separate hydrogen from the hydraulic oil used for compression. Second, we offer a simple fuel, which is a 10 to 20 kilogram per day station that includes production, compression, storage, and dispensing. The station is smaller than the vehicle it is fueling, and the minimal setbacks 
allow hydrogen to be available in even the most constrained locations. Third, we offer hydrogen refueling stations that take any source of hydrogen and compress, store, chill, and dispense to 350 and 700 bar. These are fast fill stations that refuel hydrogen vehicles as quickly as gasoline stations fill cars and diesel stations fill trucks. So let's jump into the hydrogen energy applications. The first is liquid hydrogen sites. These are prevalent in the United States due to the infrastructure put in place by NASA and the Space Administration. These sites take advantage of, hydro of liquid hydrogen's high energy density to move more kilograms cheaper than gaseous tube trailers. The liquid hydrogen is delivered to a cryogenic tank where it is stored until it is needed. The rest of the site vaporizes and compresses hydrogen to high pressure ground storage where it is available to be dispensed. A problem with liquid hydrogen sites is what results when there is uneven consumption. If liquid hydrogen is not being pulled from the tank fast enough, it heats up and begins vaporizing to gas inside the tank. The pressure builds up until it must be vented, losing valuable hydrogen in the process. Instead, PDC compressors can be used to draw hydrogen gas out of the tank. In this application, our PDC-4150 compresses from 100 PSI to 6,500 PSI ground storage pressure. The compressor saves 25,000 kilograms annually, which is worth about $125,000. The compressor pays for itself in less than two years. The economic value of our compressors in this application is evident with over 100 compressors in the field for this specific function. Second application is material handling. There are over 30,000 forklift trucks at distribution centers like Walmart and Amazon. The value proposition is clear. At high throughput DCs, the name of the game is productivity. Every shift, battery powered forklift trucks lose 20 minutes to travel to the battery room for replacement. Our simple fuel station can be located right in the work cell and refuel hydrogen forklifts in three minutes. So follow the economics on the right. A fleet of 200 trucks working three shifts per day and 360 days per year saves over 60,000 hours of labor. At $20 an hour, that's over 1.2 million annually. But this is not the only value created. Hydrogen, forklift, hydrogen forklifts are capable of more picks per hour because they do not slow down over the shift like their battery counterparts. Without the need to collect and store batteries and chargers, DCs can get rid of the battery room, which creates five to 10% more space for goods. And the laborers that change the batteries can be moved to another revenue generating function at the DC. With simple fuel, the hydrogen is produced and dispensed right in the work cell with no outside infrastructure needed and can even deliver green hydrogen to the fleet by using rooftop solar. And now we'll show you an animation of how simple fuel works. Removing the panels shows the electrolyzer stack and cleanup system. The electrolyzer uses electricity to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. The PSA eliminates water and further purifies hydrogen to fuel cell grade. The compressor boosts the hydrogen to about 400 bar where it is stored internally. Tanks hold about five kilograms of hydrogen ready to be dispensed. A firewall around the storage enables the simple fuel to be sited directly adjacent to a building. The PLC valve panel and instrumentation safely control the rate of hydrogen flow to the vehicle tank. It dispenses to a 350 bar vehicle in as little as two minutes per kilogram. And to a 700 bar vehicle in as little as eight to 10 minutes per kilogram. External storage can be connected to simple fuel to improve back to back disp dispensing times. The next 
application I'd like to talk about is power to gas, which is an enormous opportunity to take advantage of low cost energy to produce hydrogen. There are two factors that contribute to this low cost energy. First, there's been an enormous amount of solar and wind installations around the world. When connected to the grid, these cause huge supply and demand imbalances. The chart in the lower left shows the impact of solar power on California's grid demand. In 2012, which is the gray line, demand was relatively stable. Each year, solar increasingly reduced demand on the grid, creating what is known as the duck curve. With an overabundance of energy in the middle of the day, energy is curtailed or thrown away, which hurts the business case for more renewables. Energy providers would certainly prefer to sell the curtailed electricity at low, pr at low prices rather than throw it away. The second factor is that the price have decreased in, for solar and wind. Both energy sources dropped to about $40 per megawatt hour in 2018. Over the last year, we've seen significant interest in large scale power to gas projects in the 10 to 20 megawatt range which yields about four to eight tons of hydrogen per day. There's even been planning for up to 100 megawatt electrolyzers. So why is there so much interest? Because power to gas dramatically reduces hydrogen production costs. At $40 per megawatt hour, hydrogen can be produced for less than $2.50 per kilogram using electrolysis of water. In comparison, the most common hydrogen station price in California right now is $13.99 per kilogram. Additionally, hydrogen can be 100% renewable and can meaningfully contribute to global and local emission reduction goals. The PDC, which is shown on the right, is our high flow compressor platform that can deliver multiple tons of high pressure hydrogen per day from mobile pipelines and decarbonizing the natural gas grid. The flow capacities across our four compressor platforms are shown here based on a 30 bar PEM electrolyzer input. The left side shows three applications, 300 bar for mobile pipeline tube trailers, 500 bar for medium and heavy duty vehicle stations, and 900 bar for light duty vehicle stations. Under the compressors, you see a range of flows. The low end of the range represents two stage while the high end represents four stage. As I mentioned earlier, we are seeing a large wave of large scale power to gas projects coming and PDC is developing compressor solutions to match the large electrolyzer output. There will be more to come to talk about on this topic later this year. The fourth application is unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs. There are many interesting applications where drones have a real value proposition. Typically, planes and helicopters cost about $250 per flight hour or more, so having alternatives can be very attractive. UAVs in agriculture enable farmers to track crop health and apply pesticides. For commercial inspection, UAVs limit human safety concerns and can fly to locations that are hard to access. The low heat and noise signature make drones perfect for military and surveillance purposes. Some companies are even using UAVs for package deliveries to locations where it is cheaper to transport as the crow flies, a direct line between the source and a hard to reach location. So let's compare it to internal combustion engines and battery powered drones. Hydrogen UAVs have a longer service interval and can fly higher altitudes than internal combustion engines. Compared to batteries, hydrogen UAVs fly for several hours compared to 20 to 30 minutes for batteries. The value proposition is a lot like forklift trucks. The drone can stay up in the air doing productive work instead of wasting time traveling to change batteries. These drones use a small amount of hydrogen. It's one third to two thirds of a kilogram over an eight hour schedule, which is relatively small. PDC can provide very small compressors to draw hydrogen from cylinders or small electrolyzers and direct fill the composite hydrogen tank on the UAV. The PDC-3 compressor, shown in the lower right, is just over a square meter in footprint and is set up for autom automatic operation. Just connect the electricity, the hydrogen source, and the UAV hydrogen tank, 
and the compressor can fill in a minute or two, allowing the UAV to quickly return to the sky. For fleets of, of many UAVs, our simple fuel product would be perfect. So the last application, but certainly not the least, is hydrogen stations. Uh, medium duty and heavy duty for buses and trucks and light duty for cars. The value proposition for hydrogen vehicles is that they can do everything a gasoline or diesel vehicle can do, but more efficiently, no vehicle emissions, better acceleration, better stopping capability, and less maintenance. And they can fill up their fuel tanks just as quickly as gasoline or diesel, no compromises. Just a few of the OEMs are shown here who are investing into the hydrogen mobility revolution and PDC solutions can help these vehicles. This is a process flow diagram that shows the architecture in our HRS. The HRS can connect to any hydrogen source at any pressure, including electrolyzers, reformers, liquid sites, and tube trailers. The PDC compressor boosts the hydrogen to 500 bar for medium and heavy duty, 900 bar for light duty. A pressure fill manifold controls which storage vessel is being filled by the compressor, and the cascade fill manifold switches the storage vessel that supplies hydrogen to the dispenser for fast filling. Finally, uh, the dispenser connects the vehicle uh, to the vehicle receptacle. We have a, a HEX and chiller that pre-cools the hydrogen temperature according to SAE J2601 fueling protocols. The HRS is controlled using a PLC and safety platform that includes fire eyes, heat detectors, and flammable gas detectors. Our HRS stations are factory certified by Intertech to ISO, as well as local standards such as NFPA for US, PED, ATEX, and CE for Europe, and IEC EX for Australia. Our latest example of our HRS solution is currently being installed in Canberra in the Australian Capital Territory. The station, the first of its kind in Australia, will fuel a fleet of 20 Hyundai Nexo vehicles. The station takes hydrogen from a 30 bar electrolyzer and provides T40 fast fills at 700 bar. This station design is future-proofed, designed to grow with the car fleet with minimal impact to the HRS. The site capacity will triple next year by adding a compressor inside the existing enclosure and adding ground storage to the pad. There are a lot, there are a wide range of applications for hydrogen energy, and the number of applica applications seem to be growing steadily. We have PDC machines are ready to help you with your projects. Uh, you can contact me for the Americas, Europe, and Oceania opportunities, and you can contact Kareem for Asia. Uh, we do have a fourth webinar coming up in our series, which will focus on Asia and Australia. And with that, I will turn it back over to Kareem. Thanks, Jim, for a great presentation. So now we're going to get to some of the question and answer. And some folks have entered uh, some questions into the Q&A chat. So uh, the first two I will talk about uh, is PDC looking into electrochemical hydrogen compressors, which are more efficient than mechanical ones. So I guess I can talk about a little bit about uh, PDC's uh, compressor efficiency in a function of kilowatt hours per kilogram. We range in anywhere in between 1.2 to 3-ish kilowatt hours per kilogram compressed. Um, and the data that I understand from uh, EHC opportunities are in the four and a half to six range. Uh, Jim, you could correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, go ahead. And the other thing about the electrochemical compression is that the scale of it is, is relatively small at this point. You know, we've, we've evaluated it and uh, it's really limited to one to two kilograms per day. There has been some projections of, of getting that up to 10 kilograms per day per stack. But if you're talking about a thousand kilograms a day that you need, you know, you're going to need a hundred um, EC compressor stacks. So it's it's not at the scale right now where it's commercially vi viable for a lot of uh, the hydrogen energy applications. And and we really see the hydrogen market moving towards scale. So uh, the the buzzwords are medium and heavy duty trucks, captured fleets, moving tonnage a day, and as well as we're talking the megawatt scale. 
uh, power to gas applications that Jim had mentioned, we're, we're talking, uh, you know, 10 to 30 tons a day of hydrogen compression uh, in those applications. So we look forward to the day when the AHC is uh, available um, and we will continue to monitor uh, those, those developments as, as we go along. Um, the next question was, uh, will the compressor be supplied through the European office be certified for the European market? So yes, it will. Um, we're making uh, compressors now that are CE marked and in accordance to all of the EU directives for pressure equipment, uh, 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 safety uh, for the mechanical directive, machinery directive, and all of the other applicable directives. So yes, it'll be certified for uh, the EU market. And something to add there as well as we can locally source the ATEX motors and the PED uh, heat exchangers and pressure vessels. So it, it streamline, streamlines the manufacturing and certification process. Um, I'm, I'm sort of going to skip around a little bit. So uh, Syed Munchtaba has asked from Saudi Arabia, a uh, great Teledyne rep, uh, do the forklift require changing the internals to work with hydrogen gas? So uh, Syed, so the battery electric, well, Jim, you take this one. <laughs> I'm sorry, can you repeat the question for me. Uh, how can you change the internals of a forklift to run on hydrogen? So uh, forklift trucks, if you have a battery uh, powered forklift truck right now, uh, there's companies out there, uh, Plug Power, Nuvera, who make the fuel cells that are in the same form, fit and function as the battery. So you don't have to make any modifications to the battery forklift truck to accommodate uh, the hydrogen fuel cell. You might need to uh, uh, make some uh, air intake and in, in heat exchange um, pathways, but it does not require purchasing a new forklift truck for a hydrogen fuel cell. Um, if it's uh, internal combustion engine, uh, forklift, then, then you are required to buy a electric uh, drivetrain forklift truck. Uh, next question from uh, Prasanta Gorai asks the range of temperature for which the compressor is designed for an HRS application. So we will design it to any ambient condition. So whether that's uh, Saudi Arabia, 50 degrees C, max ambient to Alberta, Canada, which is minus 40 degrees uh, C ambient. So it really depends on where this is being located. Yeah, and that, that HRS that I showed you in my last slide for Canberra was designed for the highest temperatures. Um, it, it reaches 46 degrees C in Canberra. So that's what it's been designed for. So we can handle uh, the hot, we can also handle the, the very cold environments with uh, heaters that are inside of the uh, cabinets, as well as winterization packages for the different components. Um, there was a question from Robert Rashan. So the question is, how does PDC support equipment maintenance in remote locations? So uh, our answer to that is we support that from our local field service uh, representatives, as well as PDC is starting to transform our equipment to connected systems where we can monitor and provide predictive maintenance uh, before an event actually occurs. And one of the best cases for this is our unit, which is in Northern Japan, which is a simple fuel hydrogen station um, is in an area that takes at least five hours to gain access to in the middle of mountains um, in Iwate Prefecture. And that is connected 24 seven to our remote monitoring system um, where we're able to predict uh, before that system has an event where we can have service staff arrive on site to be able to provide a service stand support um, uh, to that customer. We're going to take one more question. Uh, and then what I would encourage everybody is to email uh, Jim or I your questions, connect with us on LinkedIn. Uh, and a recording of this will be made available on our PDC YouTube channel um, after, after this. Um, what are the best range of capacities for PDC machines? Uh, Jim, you want to take a stab at that one? Sure. Um, if you refer to the, 
the slide that we had about the family of diaphragm compressors. Um, PDC-3 is uh, small. It's, like I said, a, a square meter footprint. Um, if you use it from, let's say, 30 bar up to 500 bar, you can get about 50 kilograms a day. Um, so it really depends on what your suction pressure is, what the discharge pressure, and what the intended flow rate will be. But we can get up into multiple tons per day per compressor. And as I said, uh, we are developing other compressors that will be able to handle much higher uh, rates of flow. So please reach out to me if you've got your process conditions. I can size one up for you and provide all of the details, flow curves, data sheets, general arrangement drawings, anything else that you need. So with that, I really want to deeply uh, convey my appreciation for all of you joining us. We, we really had a worldwide audience today. Uh, somebody burning the midnight oil in Australia, down to South Africa, South America from Brazil, lots of people from the European Union, Russia. Our next webinar will be coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, please stay tuned. We will announce that on LinkedIn. Uh, where we will really focus on the Asian markets where those economies are really bringing a massive scale uh, to uh, those economies. So the Asian market and also Oceania. With that, uh, I convey my thanks. Please reach out to us afterwards. I apologize for not being able to get to everybody's question. And uh, have a wonderful and safe rest of your week. And we hope to see you soon.